Hey guys, before we begin today, I wanted to give you access to the peer deck. So that way, even if you're not going to engage in most of the activities, you still have a copy. Um, you can add it to your Google Drive and you can edit it. So how about we begin? Welcome to culturally responsive teaching across disciplines with Yadik Savi Jalva. I am so excited to be here today for Peer Fair 2.0 to share culturally responsive teaching with you guys. I am the founder and president of YV Educational Resources Incorporated, which is a nonprofit that's geared to helping out you educators. We create resources that are culturally responsive and we make them available for anyone who wants it. It is free of charge and I created it, so I keep you guys in mind just as much as I keep my students in mind. I'm also the host of the Flipgrid series, Ask Sharita Culture Responsive Teaching, where weekly we engage in conversation about culture, about engagement, about diversity, inclusion, equity, justice. And I answer questions from teachers all over the world, and I also create resources to actually help them in their classes. I am also a social studies teacher for the New York City Department of Education. I teach grades 10 through 12, overage, undercredited students. So my students age ranges from 16 to 21. I teach advanced placement and United States history. Um, everything that I teach is from a critical lens. So students get to learn different perspectives while still being able to understand history. I'm an MIE expert, an inspirational educator, a Wakelet ambassador, a Flipgrid ambassador, Apple teacher, and the list goes on. But above everything, I am excited that you guys are here to join me today for Peer Fair 2.0 because I get to share with you guys something that is near and dear to my heart, CRT. So what is culturally responsive teaching? Most of you have heard of the term culturally relevant teaching, and that's just the idea of empowering students um, intellectually, socially, emotionally to use their cultural references um, to transmit knowledge, skills, and attitudes in classes. Not so long ago, Geneva Gay had coined the phrase culturally responsive teaching where she theorizes the idea of using the students' culturally frames in your curriculum and in your content or using their personal strengths, um, their capabilities, and their prior knowledge to engage students. What I love about culturally responsive teaching is it's literally just about how do you engage students by infusing and embedding what they love to do into your daily practices. It challenges us as educators to get to know your students on a level that's way beyond what a survey may let you know about them in regards to their favorite fruit or their favorite meal. It allows you to become a part of them. Whether or not we live in their households, we're still becoming a part of them because they are with us for half of the day, right? And so you want to make the best of it for not only you, but for your student. So reasons to use Peer Deck to integrate culturally responsive teaching. Most of you are already engaged in Peer Deck. Hello, that's why you're here today, right? But I'm here to let you know that Pear Deck is so much more than just a way to present your Google Slides or your PowerPoint. It is a way to engage and support all students in learning, regardless of the diversity, regardless of the language barriers. Um, it is a way that you can support every student by meeting them where they are. It encourages self-expression. So you have it where you're giving kids the options of drawing their thoughts or writing out their thoughts. And so students are able to produce works that are original, that are just for them and by them. It is also a way to design effective learning experiences for every single student. So you can integrate YouTube, you can app smash with Adobe Spark and Flipgrid, um, and you're able to differentiate the instruction in a way where a student might be able to view a video, analyze a quote, read text, highlight text, and then let you know exactly what their thoughts are after. So what I would say is with those three aspects all in itself, you're developing higher level of academic skills within the student because 
Pear Deck is allowing you to create works that are relevant to who your students are. And you're making that connection between what they're learning in class with their own lives, which is honestly what culture responsive teaching is. How does your lesson today pertain to what your students are going through at home today and tomorrow and anytime else? So what is culture? When I think of culture, I think of the fact that yo hablo en español y yo nací en Panama. So my language is Spanish and that is my first language, but I also speak English. Um, music, I listen to salsa, I listen to merengue, I listen to reggae, rap, hip hop, country music. And folks don't know that about me because they've never really asked me, what is it that I listen to? What is it that I care about? Religion, cuisine, I love Italian food, but I also love fried chicken and collard greens. And then I also love Arroz con guandules, y pollo, y puerco, y pernil. And so when we think about culture, we have to acknowledge that everyone's different, but differences are what makes life unique. Because if we were all the same, can you just imagine how boring life would be if every single person was the same? So I would like to think of my classroom as just being a melting pot of diverse learners infused with everything that they could contribute, their language, their music, the way they speak. And, and when I say the way they speak, this goes beyond just language. I tell people all the time, my students may nod to say what's up in the morning. I don't take that to offense. I just know that means what's up? So I nod back or I say, hey, what's up? How you doing? And every single student is different. I may have kids who tap my shoulder and go, hey, Ms. V, or some who don't speak at all. And in understanding their language and their culture, I have to accept that. So what I wanted to do for the next two minutes is just ask you to write a response. What is culture? And if you want to dig deeper, what is your culture? What are your characteristics and knowledge about yourself that you would want people to know, like your coworkers, um, your boss, your kids, right? Because we sometimes fail to expose ourselves to the people who are around us, but yet we want them to truly understand who we are. So while you're doing this activity, I need you to understand that culture is not race. So I'll give you guys about two minutes so you could honestly write it here on this interactive slide, or you can write it in a chat box. What is culture? What characteristics about you would you want to share with everyone else? So I'll give you guys two minutes. Okay, I'm seeing some of the responses. Latina, mother, yes. Long skirts, okay. Spaghetti and meatballs, okay. Beef patties. And the list is going on, right? And I'm just picking out some things that I see you guys writing. Um, but I want you to keep in mind that culture is about us. And so culturally responsive teaching is about the students, right? What are some things that your students love? So the same way I just did this activity with you, this is a great way to introduce your students to each other. So what does culture have to do with it? Honestly, culture has everything to do with pedagogy. Culture has everything to do with teaching and learning. Zaretta Hammond wrote a book called Culture Responsive Teaching and the Brain. And in this book, she discusses the relationship between the brain and cultural information. And she says that in order for us to create independent learners and allow them to actually do higher order thinking, we have to channel that cultural information so what about your students would you like to infuse into your lesson plans? What is it that they're going through and experiencing that would encourage them to problem solve? For me, I think about um, the neighborhood that myself and my students actually live in, Bethesda-Stuyvesant. The problem is gun violence. 
It has always been a problem in our neighborhood. Um, and so for me, it's, I know this is something that our students are dealing with daily. So how do we change this for our students? How do we change the idea of gun violence? Culture responsive teaching is just that. How do we connect our students' experiences to what we're teaching? How do we play on the brain's cognitive structures so that we can create co content that is more relevant to our students? So student engagement. There's a thin connection between non-cognitive factors and cognitive learning results. So the skills motivation, perseverance, curiosity. These are skills that we want our students to have. Just think about it. Engagement itself is motivation. Motivation in order to get this done or to even begin, regardless of what I'm going through at home. Curiosity. You want students to be able to ask you questions about what you're teaching because guess what? That means they're actually putting thought into it. And once you cultivate an environment of engagement and learning and authentic learning, then you have some of these results. Improved academic performance, skill acquisition. This is important. This is what you want in your classroom. Without culturally responsive teaching, none of this is possible. I don't know any students that will want to sit into a classroom where they're not motivated to be there, where they feel as if they don't fit in, where the teacher is not posing questions that allows them to go home and further dig deep into what is being taught. Nor do I know any students who acquire skills based off of not being motivated. So we have to think about what is the connection between student engagement and culture responsive teaching. And honestly, the best way that we can do this is by engaging in activities today. So how do you put CRT into practice? This is a really good question. Are you ready? Okay. The first way, you're going to identify your student's strengths and goals. Every student is unique in their own way. But what I realized was when we give students surveys, it actually hones in on the student's inabilities, weaknesses. And what you want to do is acknowledge that every student has a strength, regardless of if that strength is tied to academics or not. And so what I love about Flipgrid and Pear Deck is that it allows the teachers to have students present their own strengths and possibilities, talents, skills, responsibilities. With Pear Deck, Pear Deck also has a template for you that's on a mind map. And what I love about using this is it allows students to create four goals. And now think about it. I didn't ask students to put any four academic goals. This was just my 2020 to 2021 goals. What are they? So to get my driver's license, to guide my son through the right path, um, to graduate cosmetology school, to start my own business. This has already told me a lot about my students. One, one of my students are motivated. They're motivated by their son. Another, you want to start your own business, which means when I give you several um, history knowledge or even mathematical equations when I'm doing different activities with teachers, I'm going to want to hone in on the financial aspect of things. But also, have you done research? That is a skill that you need to know if you're going to build your own businesses. How are you going to communicate with folks who want to actually give you loans? Do you need a loan? Who dictates what you're going to need for your business? And so this is what I'm going to use to guide the rest of my school year with my students. Another student, you wanna get your driver's license, guess what? In order to get the license, you have to practice, you have to study. And so how can I help you acquire that skill of studying and practice in class so when it's time for you to do it for something that means so much more to you personally you have it down pack already all right history teachers this is the second way that we can embed crt in our classrooms and i want to start off with you how do you get to know your students individually so i used pear deck to create an activity called back to the future and for one of the activities, the students had to make believe that they traveled back to 1920. And they had to think about the things that BIPOCs went through or experienced. The social, economic, and political aspects 
that BIPOC folks were actually going through. What's important about this is the assignment didn't stop just there. After they actually channeled in information and figured out exactly what were the change in continuities, I wanted them to create a Flipgrid activity. And in this Flipgrid activity, the students had to think about an item that they would want to share with the future. So just as if, if they went back to 1920s, now you're in 2020, what would you say to the future? What would you share with them about you? What's important? And I wanted to share this video with you guys because it allows you to see exactly how the student is connecting with the world around them. And so check this out. My name is Cheyenne. This is my third period class. My mother and father there from Queens, well, from Queens or whatever. I'm pronounced as a she. Well, I like to put inside of a capsule and why I like to put a picture of me traveling. You know, travel pictures of myself so people can see that I travel and have fun. Period. Um, what I like to show the future um, is basically just how just this world is just screwed. If the future is more better than now, I want you to be able to see how we had to go through the struggle with this Rona and this, this generation of just ignorant, just ugh, ugh. So I like the future to see all that and just be able to absorb that y'all got it good. Say with how our ancestors play, we got it good. They got it awesome, great, amazing, astonishing. Well, this ain't this ain't cute. So culture, right? Language. This is my student in, in the most authentic way or, or transparent way that you would see most of my students. And so what I loved was um, she actually answered my question. So I also on the Flipgrid assignment, asked them to share what was their preferred pronouns. Too often we assume that everyone's pronouns is she or he. And by allowing students to share what their preferred pronouns are, we're getting to know them even better. And another question was, well, where are you or your family from? I never want to make the assumption that everyone's from America because America is a huge melting pot. And with knowing where my students are from, where their families are from, I'm able to acknowledge that I do have a diverse space, but also when I do connect with their parents or communicate with their parents, I may say something along those lines. Hey, how's the weather in Jamaica? Or when's the last time you've been there? Because guess what? Parents also want to know that you are involved. And that's another aspect of CRT, but I'm not gonna let you know exactly how we're gonna dig deep into that. So remember I said that our sessions are going to be interactive today. And what I love about Pear Deck is that it also allows for the idea of a daily check-in. I love checking in on students on Monday for their weekend because it gives me an idea of what they went through, even if they don't want to share it. So on the left-hand side, you have one of my Pear Deck slides where I'm asking students to circle the one that best describes how their weekend was. So lit, it was exciting, I had a great weekend. Help, too much going on, I wanna talk about it one-on-one. -on -one. I'm over it, I'm glad it's over with, I don't want to discuss it. As you've seen, most of my students didn't choose help and I wanna talk, talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, but they did say I'm over it, I'm glad it's over with, which means something happened that the kids don't want me to know about. So when I reach out to students, it's never about, well, what happened this weekend? Because guess what? They acknowledge that they did not want to discuss it. So I usually use a different approach, which is how are you doing today? Um, usually the kid decides whether or not they want you to know what happened this weekend or if anything happened, it was just probably they just woke up today. Um, but also it, it allows you to push your lesson. So I know if my students really went through something really bad or something I could not fathom, then I really don't care about academics. How about we just talk today? How about on live instruction, we share some music, you play music in your background, or I'll play music in my background, and we just talk about stuff that has nothing to do with school or home. Pear Deck already makes these available for you. What I would say is when you think about CRT, just think about the idea of incorporating who you are into it as well. 
So what I usually do is I insert my Bitmojis to make it more unique, to make it more personalized. And then I change it every day. So as you can see on the right hand side at the bottom, my check in starts off with killing it. I'm OK. And then the current mood. Um, and you could also see my students' responses, right? So I actually had two students who were near what I call the breaking point, which means I need to reach out to them. And then I also had some students who were saying, oh, I'm okay, but it still is leaning to the side of I'm over it. So these are a really good way to check in, but guess what? It's also an awesome way for you to get to know your students. How many of you are actually taking the time out to ask your students how they're doing today? How many of you forget about academics and say, you know what, everything is about you, let's listen to some music, and let me get to know you beyond what your test scores say that you are? Because guess what? Standardized tests don't measure a student. It really doesn't. In my opinion, it just measures if the student is able to remember information, which we know that is not what school is about. Because half the things that we learn in school, and I'm sorry to say this, we forget. I cannot tell you what I learned content-wise in high school, but I can tell you that the skills that I learned in high school really were applied in college. So the third way, let's look for ways to increase relevance. ELA teachers, this is for you. So think about giving four quotes to students, and then you're saying, draw or write your emotion, emotional reaction to one of these quotes. This is a cool way to get kids started with books, um, to analyze poetry, but also to just dig deep into how they're feeling. So I like to choose things from rappers and poets and authors just to mix it up a bit. And so as I mentioned before, this is an interactive session. So guess what? This activity is for you guys, for everyone. So I would like you to draw anyway on the slide um, your emotional reaction to one of these quotes. So you can circle the quote and then literally just draw. If you don't want to draw, Peer Deck gives you the option to add text. So please feel free to add text. I'm going to give you guys about two minutes. Cool. I see some folks chose links to Hughes. And remember, you don't necessarily have to do it on the interactive slide. You can write in the chat box. So I'm still looking, okay. So ELA teachers, and even social studies teachers, health, phys ed, science, think about the opportunities that you're actually allowing students to engage with learning and content just by giving them four choices. And the four choices can be from four different books or four different texts or four different equations, and they're just choosing which one they want to focus on. This is even great for math. Um, if you're teaching a skill and there's ways that, you know, students can still practice that skill with four different mathematical equations or problems, you may want to put them up and just have the kid choose whichever one they want to focus on. Okay, I see enough responses. Let's move on. So I love doing this with students, as you can see. I love giving them quotes and then asking them to explain um, and interpret. So Peer Deck already has these interactive slides in, in the Peer Deck Power Up, and you get to choose whichever one you want to use with your learners. I usually use any kind of quotes that resonate with me that morning. Um, if it doesn't necessarily resonate with me for that morning, it could be based off of a lesson that I did the day before or something that a student might have said to me or shared with me. Um, so this one I love the most. Receiving an award for playing a superhero is amazing, but it's even greater to acknowledge the heroes that we have in real life. So I gave this to students the day after he had passed. And it was really important for me to connect this with students because guess what? Black Panther was so much more to the Black community than just a comic book or superhero. Chadwick was a person that we looked at and up to because he knew who we were as a civilization, as a people. And so a lot of people have, including myself, have seen him almost as like, you're real. 
I look up to you. I know that things are possible. Um, for everyone, Wakanda is a sense of hope. And so I wanted my students to know that I acknowledged that he had passed, but also um, that you can still keep living your life as if you're a hero because you are a hero. And we go through things every day and um, we don't give ourselves credit for pulling ourselves out of the mud and, you know, cleaning ourselves up and moving on. And so, yeah, so I love using the interpret explain and let's move on. So math. The fourth way that we can embed CRT into our lesson plans is by examining the curriculum. So if you really took the time out to examine your curriculum, then you would know it does not include all of our learners. Whether if it's the names that are being used um, or the items, it has nothing to do with culture references or interests. And so what I love to do is have students rewrite a mathematical problem. They would change the names and also they would fill in the blanks with things that interest them the most. And what I did is I created a video using Flipgrid to introduce this concept to students. Math. So if you read the instructions, we know the first thing that we have to do is rewrite the problem, but you're going to actually fill in the blanks with anything that interests you. So if you know me or you've seen me person in person or face to face, then you know I love sneakers. So my topic is going to be boxes of sneakers. So check this out. So as you can see, I rewrote my equation. And this is what it states. Stephanie has 10 boxes with eight pairs of sneakers in each box. Hassan has 10 boxes with 12 pairs of sneakers in each box. How many more pairs of sneakers does Hassan have? So we have to solve this equation. Now, what I hear is multiplication and also subtraction. So we have... So what's important about this? You're allowing students to create their own mathematical problems. But deeper, this is a sense of inclusion. You are acknowledging the importance of including students in their own learning process. So I actually wanted to engage in this with teachers, whether you're a math teacher or not. Um, I think you're going to find this activity fun. So you're going to draw anywhere on the slide and you're going to rewrite the mathematical problem by changing the names and also filling in the blanks. You don't have to solve the equation or the problem, um, but I'll give you guys about a minute or so just so that you can get a feel of it. And remember, all of these slides are going to be available after the presentation as well. All right, so let's look for another way that we can embed CRT into our lessons. Science teachers, this is for you. So the fifth way is to understand what students need. The best way to understand what a student needs is by allowing them to become the expert. Even if you don't think they're experts, guess what? They are. We have to provide an ample opportunity for students to share their thinking. And the best way to do that is by allowing them to engage in conversations with their peers. So what I love about Peer Deck is that they've already created this kind of activity where the student would pretend that their friend was absent from class and then they would have to write what they would say to that person or that student to explain the lesson. So I wanted to do this with you guys today. So there's a coronavirus quick fact sheets. And imagine this was the science lesson, right? You wanted the kids to know quick facts about COVID-19. Now, pretend someone was absent from your job and it was your duty to make sure that they understand the quick facts about the coronavirus. What would you tell them? You can write your response on this interactive slide or in the chat. So I'll take a look at the chat real quick. Okay, someone said it's airborne. The virus could be present for up to 14 days. Has similar symptoms to the cold and the flu. You get to allow them to become the teacher for that day. 
So the sixth aspect of embedding CRT into your classroom lesson, family connection. Phys Ed teachers, this is for you. How do you get your parents moving the same way you actually get kids to move? So I mentioned to you guys before that Pear Deck and Flipgrid is so good for culture responsive teaching. It's an effective platform to use because honestly, it's flexible. You can integrate other platforms within it. So what I decided to do was I created a Flipgrid activity called a talent share. And what parents had to do was a song or dance that basically just shows how their day was. And so regardless of the language barriers, I wanted to include my students and my families into the classroom. So check out this video. Hey. So I know you're laughing, and I did too, but phys ed teachers, you got them to move, right? And so what happens if families don't want to do this? That's fine. Think about a shout out. I actually encourage my students to give a Friday shout out. And this was a way for me to share with parents how students felt. And so my students were prompted to give a shout out to someone in their class, their home or school personnel um, to just thank them. And when they did this, especially to their parents, I just snapped the picture of it and I sent it through text messaging. That way parents also knew how students felt, but also I'm sharing with you something other than negative information about your students' progress in my class. This is almost like a thank you from the both of us, right? And so I know it's not Friday, but if you were to give a shout out to someone, who would it be and why? Okay, let's move on. Lastly, reflections or self-knowledge. If we're talking about social and emotional learning, this is self-awareness, right? This is one of the competencies of social and emotional learning. So for health, I think of um, mindfulness. I think of being really good mentally, um, thinking positively and Honestly, with reflections, you allow students to become independent learners. This is a strategy for assessment as learning because students get to see where they are and where they need to be. So Peer Deck already has slides that has thumbs up, thumbs down, or agree, disagree. And what I just did was I included, have you completed all the assignments for the marking period? So students get to see where they stand, but also if we're thinking about assessment as learning, they're thinking about what they need to do in order to pass. What I also love doing is putting in the assignments that I've already given students and allowing them to use Pear Deck to check off what they've already done or what they've already completed. This is a form of assessment because now they get to see what items they haven't done yet and what they need to do. But also I always put when the assignment was due so that way students can see how long ago they had the assignment and how much of a chance they had to actually complete it before it is due. This is a great way for students to be able to be aware of where they stand in your classroom, but also prepare them for life after high school. Some people will not ask your students how they're doing at work. And so this is just getting kids ready and prepared for life after high school in regards to what are some things that I need to do in order to prepare myself for work in the morning. This is also another way that I have kids reflect. Um, the day before the marking period is over, I usually use a quote for them to interpret on Pear Deck. And I use quotes like this one by Ward, opportunities are like sunrises. If you wait too long, you miss them. And then I allow students to actually interpret what that means. And so I always take this as, this is an indirect approach to letting you know you have X amount of days to turn this work in without saying you have X amount of days to turn this work in. And so some of the reflections, take advantage of opportunities. I agree with this quote. If you keep procrastinating, you will miss out on important things. You must use time wisely. So you're allowing students to interpret this, but also guess what? 
they're reflecting on what it means to them. So if I'm that student that's missing four assignments, I'm going to take it as, yeah, I really have to get it together and take hold of every single opportunity and chance that I get in life. So this is way beyond just academics, though, because now you're saying this is what you need to understand about opportunities. This is what you need to understand about life. This is culturally responsive teaching. So as we approach the end of this session, I wanted you to reflect. I wanted you to be more self-aware. And so the best way to do it is by prompting you to answer this question. How can you best use your knowledge of your student's culture? So language, the clothes that they wear, the music, the food, um, to create engaging classroom activities. How can you do this? So you're gonna write in your response or if you haven't joined this Pear Deck, you can actually write it in the chat. So as you guys are finishing up, I wanted to share with you guys again that I'm the host of the Flipgrid series, Ask Yuritza, and I answer every single question that you have on culturally responsive teaching. Weekly, I am live on YouTube at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and then I produce a blog post with resources that are ready to use on Friday. So I actually want to take the time out now to say thank you. I've enjoyed this peer session. Um, you guys are the best. If you need to contact me, here's my email and my website. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, uh, at INC underscore YV, or you can use the hashtag actuarita if you have any culture responsive questions, even during this session. And also hashtag YV resources for our nonprofit. Um, if you want to engage in some of the Google Classrooms that are free of charge, you can feel free to do so. So thank you guys. Bye.